Hey guys, my name is Dominic Flux, and today I'm joined by Lorianne. She's an FGA and GIA gemologist, and we are going to cover my all-time favorite gemstone, tourmaline. Mm -hmm. It is one of the most beautiful stones because it has like the craziest range of colors and also bicolored. So you can find like insane stones with like multiple colors within them. So we're going to break it down for you, all the colors, the prices, what to look out for, treatments, and... Of course, all your favorite colors. And maybe we're going to talk a little bit about Paraiba, but... Yeah, I just a know. little bit, <laughs> just a little sneak peek. All right, so let's start with, I think the most important, the colors. What's fun about tourmaline is that if you can think of a color, if you like a specific type of shade or color, you're gonna have it. Mm -hmm. Tourmaline has every color of the rainbow, every tone, every shade, every quality you can find. So if, if tourmaline is your uh, birthstone, I mean, you're the luckiest guy or girl ever. Which and is October, uh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Let's go into like breaking down the colors by name so we can give you very clear examples of what each one looks like. I was thinking, I guess let's start with the oranges and reds. Uh-huh, of course. Kay. So not all tourmalines have specific names, but some of them do because they're considered more important on the gemstone market. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have here some brownish yellow tint, and th those are just the yellow tourmalines. But then you fall into the red and the dark pink. So mm -hmm. the more red it is, the more precious it is, and those are rubellite. Yeah. So the, the red tourmaline are rubellite, and those, as soon as you get a good ruby-like color, they're going to be more expensive. And they're rarely not included. The mm -hmm. pink tourmaline and the red tourmaline are often the most included tourmalines. So when you find a beautiful stone that is practically flawless and red, keep it, it's worth a lot. Okay. Then afterwards you have the pink tourmalines. Those are the ones we see the most for birthstones for the October month uh, pe because people think there's only pink or green tourmaline. Mm -hmm. So the pink is the one you see the most often. And then here we have some pale pink, some peach colors. Those are fun too. They're often included and stressed because most of them are uh, mined Afghanistan. Okay. And in Afghanistan, they mine with explosions, dynamite. Oh, wow. So <laughs> since they dynamite the gemstones, most of them that come from Afghanistan are stressed and included with fissures. So that's why it's harder to find good quality. That sounds literally insane. <laughs> 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 you would think that they would find a better option of just blowing things up. The rock is hard there. They don't have a lot of choice. Oh, wow. So okay. I'm not saying every one of them is cracked and included. I'm just saying that the stones have a little more stress to them if they okay. come from Afghanistan than they come from Brazil. Let's say Brazil is a lot, m a lot more relaxed in that okay. sense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you have the uh, classic bicolor tourmaline. So the bicolor, you're looking again at mm -hmm. green to pink. Yep. Sometimes you have a tricolor, so you have, you're going to have the green to colorless to pink. Uh, and those are really South after colors. So those are collector's pieces, uh, high-end jewelry, even medium to low-end. But the, the less inclusion it has and the more saturated the color is, the most expensive the, the piece is going to get. Mm -hmm. So those, the people really li like them and they're often cut on the, on the length because you want to have all the colors in the stone mm -hmm. the most possible. Then you you fall into the mint colors. So Yay! <laughs> That's what my ring is. It's mint tourmaline. I love mint and yellow gold. I have a lot of uh, suppliers that tell me that mint is going to be the color of the year. Oh, very good. Also with some red shade, uh, red uh, green shades. So very the green good. and minty green are going to be the colors of the year. That's what. That's what they tell me. Oh, yeah, that looks great. So you have the minty green that doesn't have a specific name, but it's mint. It's mint. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's a breath of yeah. fresh air. And then you have the dark green, the forest green, that's going to be a chrome tourmaline. So this is a, the name is just the element that it takes to, to, to have that color. Yep. The chrome tourmaline is more expensive than the normal green tourmaline, just mm -hmm. because of the element of chrome. Okay. It's more rare. Sometimes you find it in Kenya. Sometimes you find it in Tanzania. It depends on the location, but it's south after. Okay. Then you can have a sea foam color. Mm -hmm. Sea foam is the bluish green or greenish blue color that you can find in tourmaline and this one uh, is a good example of it and even the rough that we saw earlier it's becoming more popular because the chrome tourmaline is starting to get hard to find in big stones okay so the sea foam mm -hmm. is a good also uh, alternative for those who can't find the dark forest green but like the tourmaline mm -hmm. so you can have you can uh, find bigger pieces in that type of color and shade 
Yeah. When you know a, a piece like that could easily be six thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I say less expensive, bigger, bigger, but still an expensive color. Yeah. And then you can have in the blue, you can have a sapphire blue color. Also a little bit more included, but not as included as the pinks. Mm-hmm. But still, you can have some dark blue, some London blue shades too, yeah. London blue topaz. I, I never get requests ever, ever for, for blue tourmaline. Never. You, you never get what? Never. Requests. Requests? Yeah. People don't know it exists. They don't know it. So, <laughs> yeah, it's very uncommon, I feel. And then you have the best, I'd say the most expensive tourmaline of all, and you'd guess it, it's Paraiba. Yeah. So Paraiba, it comes either from Paraiba, Brazil or Mozambique. Mm-hmm. If it comes from the Paraiba location, it's going to be super expensive. It can be easily 30,000 per, per carat. So a stone like that, that's about uh, one carat, could be $30,000 $30, for the stone. Yeah. If you get in the, in the good qualities, not too included, mm-hmm. no heat or heat, it depends. Yeah. And uh, the Mozambique is also an option, same colors. Exactly the same colors, but since it's not Paraiba, true Paraiba, yep. it's a little bit less expensive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is a stone that it's um, you're going to be looking really for the color over the clarity and anything else. Oh, a hundred percent. You you want the electric blue color of it. Mm-hmm. It's going to be worth more, but it's and a beautiful it's stone. We're going to do a full video on this, so <laughs> <laughs> just hold your brakes. We're going to do a deep dive. It deserves its own video. Of course, and it's such a bright electric blue. The most, yep. the more electric it is, the more Paraiba-like you want it, it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So the more expensive it's going to be. Because you have a lot of people selling Paraiba that are greenish, yep. or you have some that are selling pale blue, or you have some that are selling it as a purple. Purple is the color that you find it most of the time. In yep. Paraiba, you find purple tourmaline, you heat it, and then it turns electric blue. So sometimes you've ha- you have it naturally, sometimes you have to turn the purple into electric blue. But the mm-hmm. p- if you buy a purple one, it's not going to be the same price as the electric blue. Yeah. So people are going to try and sell you green, they're going to try and sell you blue, they're going to try and sell you purple. No, you want the electric turquoise-ish blue color. Yeah. And it's, it's a bright color. It's one of the brightest of all the tourmalines. Mm-hmm. And then afterwards, uh, you have colorless. Those are less used and less mm-hmm. found in the gemology world because mm-hmm. we don't need another colorless stone yeah. that much. Yeah. And then you can even have shades of gray mm-hmm. with and that. And then the last one is black, which is... And the last one is a big chunk of black that we call shorl. Yeah. So the shorl tourmaline is well known. I don't know I don't know why it has a name because we'd never cut it because it's too, uh, it's too fissured. It has a lot of cracks. But it can grow into big crystals. So, I mean, for a collector's stone, or if you want to have collect all the colors of the tourmaline rainbow, mm-hmm. it's good to have. But uh, the, uh, the, the the shorl... F- yeah, I feel like a lot of people will use it for... Um, they collect crystals. Like exactly. people who have, like, crystals and, like, believe in, like, the benefits and stuff. I see that a lot of them will have black tourmaline. Uh-huh. But, I mean, you could just use the black spinel as well. Exactly. Or black sapphire. Black garnet, black yeah. diamond. You have a lot of options that are not going to be cracked, like the black tourmaline. Mm-hmm. There's also n- market names, so marketing names to sell the gemstones. Seafoam was one of them. Seafoam is not an official name, mm-hmm. but it's a, a sellable name. Yeah. And then you have uh, the indigo blue. So we also have a little oval here that we'll show uh, maybe later on in the video. Mm-hmm. You have the indigo blue, you have the dark blue, you have mermaid color, you have teal. <laughs> So all the names are good to sell, but don't be don't be brought brought into the game. I mean, if they're trying to invent a name to sell you the stone more expensive, don't. The official names are the ones that you want. Mm-hmm. So Paraiba, Rubellite, Shorl, if you want the Shorl. <laughs> yeah, Chrome, exactly. Or the Chrome. Since it grows in a long prism, you can also have what we call the watermelon tourmaline. So it's in the colors. So mm-hmm. as we said, we, you can have colors on the length of the stone and you can have colors in the center of the stone. So these are all rough that were cut vertically, uh, or horizontally. Horizontally. Mm-hmm. Horizontally, sorry, my accent. Mm-hmm. And um, when you cut it horizontally, you're going to have all the colors in the, ru- in, the, in the rough. So you might see just a green stone, but when you cut it up, you see the pink in the center of it. So that's what's fun about water, uh, watermelon, and it's one of the most expensive tourmalines out there. Mm-hmm. So it's not really cut completely. You still have the shape of the rough, 
Yeah, but I, you can I was have thinking it. about that on my way here that I haven't seen that much faceted. No. It's always seems to be a little bit more on the rough, but that's why I feel like we see it a lot in kind of like more like bohemian style of jewelry. And like you can see some with a rose cut, you know, just oh the yeah. facets mm -hmm. on top and flat on the bottom. Yeah. Because when you facet too much and you have a pavilion under it, it's going to mix the colors too much together. So okay. it's not going to give the look you want mm -hmm. of the watermelon tourmaline. You really want the colors to be separated mm -hmm. and not reflected everywhere and mixed. Oh, I, I understand. So essentially it's going to muddy. It's exactly. going to muddy it if it's too, too faceted. Okay, exactly. that makes perfect sense. So you can do it on the length, mm -hmm. but not really when the color is on the center. Okay. So this is a perfect example of all the colors that you can have in watermelon tourmaline. And the one that you want to look out for uh, the most would be the pink center and the green on the exterior of mm -hmm. the rough. That's the most South Astra tourmaline and yep. the most expensive. Yeah, very nice. I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you want to see a good example of uh, five to ten colors in the same stone, here we have some uh, tourmalines that come from Madagascar. And these are called polychrome tourmaline. So these, to have a set, it took about five years. Oh, wow. Oh, you didn't buy it all in one set. No, you collected them. I Very bought nice. uh, big uh, lots of them and then tried to make sets of them. So this is the first set. It's a peachy color with mm -hmm. green. You have a uh, colorless, you have black, you have pink. And then you have sets like this with dark saturated colors. Also in the pink, green, colorless and red in this one. But you can have all the shapes all the colors in the same stones. And these are not that expensive because they are included. Mm -hmm. um, these go for maybe $100 per carat around that compared to the $30,000 per carat for the Paraiba. I mean, it's a bargain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about Pleo Croy. If you look down the length of the crystal, it's going to appear darker. And by the side, it's going to be a, a lighter shade. So um, it's really quite unique. And that's why you see tourmaline in a lot of uh, different elongated cuts. So like emerald mm -hmm. cuts, like cushions, uh, long ovals. You're going to see a lot of cuts like that because they want to get the most rough out of mm -hmm. it. Uh, but sometimes uh, the cutter is going to decide, OK, uh, the color that I have on the side is darker and more saturated. So he's going to sacrifice the weight of the rough and the, long, um, and the long stone to get a better quality and better color. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you're going to get trillions. So you waste more rough, but you get a be more beautiful color and more saturated. Yeah. So the pleochorism, basically, you look at a side, you see a shade. You look at another side, you see a shade darker. So you see two different kind of shades from the same color in tourmaline. And that's pleochorism. And it has two colors. It's one of the rare mm -hmm. stones that does that in the gemstone world. Yeah. Yeah. And then if we go into like the actual bicolored, tricolored properties, it's the same way that the crystal forms like the way that it grows <laughs> and it's a hard stone so even I that saw. it's not gonna break yeah. <laughs> but basically like if you look at this one because it's growing on the long for example as it's growing it's going to absorb the different minerals right and that's exactly it's going to give it its bicolored tricolored properties this is this is the perfect specimen here because as you can see it's going from more of like a yellowy green to a pink and so this is what you're going to really find uh huh. And uh, let's say you have a soup where you have a soup with tomato or you have a soup with uh, all the ingredients in it. The crystal is going to grow using the soup ingredients in it. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you're out of tomatoes, it's going to use something else. So it's going to yeah. use maybe mushrooms. So that's why it's going to change color also as time goes on. It's going to use up all the ingredients. And as soon as it's missing one, it's going to take another one just to grow another color. Yeah, it's very cool. Like I think when it absorbs chrome, it's gonna turn green. Uh, magnesium is gonna be like more reds and pinks, I believe. Exactly. Irons can be yellow. And you right? can have the blue yeah. in irons too. Yeah. And um, what's fun about tourmaline is that you get different inclusions, different colors, different reactions when you test them. Mm. Um, depending on the inclusions you find, depending on where you find them. So it's a vast world, the tourmaline, but uh, the colors are what's more special about it. Mm -hmm. And you can even find, uh, I, I took one specimen here, you can even find cat's eye tourmaline for those who are fans of, of, uh, of um, phenomenons, optical phenomenons. And you can even have uh, engraved gemstones because mm -hmm. it's a hard enough stone to engrave and have sculptures of it. Yeah. So you can find it in all the shapes. We're in the pricing, if mm -hmm. you want, I can... Yeah, absolutely. Let's touch on pricing. So if you go into the brownish to yellowish shades of tourmaline, it's not going to be expensive. Yeah. It's going to be more in the 
50 to 100 dollars per carat just because it's an original color you don't find that often on the market the best yellow tourmalines i ever saw were in vietnam oh very nice and it's mm -hmm. funny because it's not a well-known location for tourmaline so that's one thing the rubellite you can easily go up to 600 700 dollars per carat even 800 for the best reds if they're not included mm -hmm. for per carat for the stone so those are in the more expensive side if you go for the bicolor ones it's not that bad you can go to the three two hundred three hundred dollars per carat for the bicolor ones like this because they're not that saturated it's a well mm -hmm. they're not included but they're not that saturated you yeah. really want a darker pink and a darker green on the bicolor when you buy it. Mm -hmm. If you go into the chrome, that you can pay easily also $700, $800 per carat. Because the chrome is a south after stone, you don't have a lot of big ones. And the bigger it is, the less included it is, the more, more, more expensive it's going to get. If you go into the blue, it's less known on the gemology market. As you said, you never get anyone yeah. asking for them. You can get some for 300 400 per carat easily. I mean, it's not that expensive, but it's a beautiful color. Yeah. I don't know why people don't want it that much. Paraiba, we went uh, a bit into that. And the colorless, to the gray ones, those are easy. You, you get $50 per carat. Yeah. You can and find them easily for same that. Same with the black. I mean, it's probably even less. A black is a bit worthless. It can be $10, $20 per carat max, but you you won't see a lot of specimens cut. You're going to see rough specimens for mm -hmm. that. So polychrome tourmaline are not easily found. And uh, mostly they're found in Madagascar. The other ones are going to be bicolor or tricolor max. These ones are going to be like five colors, six colors, seven colors. And you have all the different colors. You can have blues, you can have pinks, you can have brown, mm -hmm. you can have green. So those are special. And they're not easily found. As I said, the, the lot that I bought, it was like on five years just mm -hmm. to get a few pieces that match together. Yeah. And if we go into the water, the watermelon tourmaline. Ooh, watermelon. So the watermelon, in my opinion, the blue is the most beautiful because I like it. I like that color, but it's not the most expensive. So uh, watermelon, most of the time you're going to find 100, 150 per carat. Mm -hmm. If you get a big one like that, you're going to be more in the 6,000, 7,000 a piece. Because yep. it's big, it's beautiful, it's mm -hmm. saturated, and it doesn't have any big fissures. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's included, but it's not dangerous, and it's big for watermelon. Yeah, by fissures, what she means is like inclusions that will basically impact the durability of the stone. Like if, if you have like a crack along the side, as soon as it's set, it could crack in two. That's what you... Exactly. Yeah. And you can have a big hit on it or you just hit the table uh, yeah. because you're having an argument and you can break in two mm -hmm. and you don't want that. So it's yeah. dangerous. So a necklace like that would go around 16,000 yeah. for uh, for, all of these for someone yeah for <laughs> someone who wants to buy it yeah so the ones that are going to be more ex most expensive are going to be these ones the big one and the ones that have the typical pink to green mm -hmm. see here these ones the pink is a little too small so it yep. wouldn't be one of the expensive ones the blue it's not watermelon and if you go look at this one, you don't see a lot of green in it. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like this is going to be the perfect specimen. This is perfect specimen. Yeah. This is also. Mm -hmm. But here you see the pink, you see a little bit of green, but the pink is on the exterior. The green is in the center and then it's black. So that's yeah. not going to be a good piece to have if you want yeah. watermelon color. So now that we've touched a little bit on like the colors and the prices, there are also different elements that are going to affect, you know, like the prices and the qualities and what you want to look for when you're buying your gemstone, um, just like any other gemstone. I think one of the most important parts other than color is like the clarity and the specific fee f f like um, rutile needle. Is it rutile? It's uh, they call it hair. Hair. Okay, yes. So it's a kind of trish trishite needles. Okay. I don't know how to say that in English but you call it hair inclusions mm -hmm. and when you when you're looking for pink or red you're gonna have small ones most of the time it's okay to have small inclusions for the pink or the red yeah. because it's often and it's well known that pink and red is more included than the other colors if you're looking for green then you want to you you want a flawless piece and that's really easy to find in tourmaline so the green flawless mm -hmm. pink and blue little inclusions are okay so what you're going to see inside is like a little bunch of hairs inside the stone it looks like that it's just a crystal that's undulated inside it's not dangerous it's good to have if you want to be sure that you have a natural stone mm -hmm. but you're also going to want to look at the cut 
you want the stone to be symmetrical, well cut, not too obese uh, on the underbelly. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to want something that shines bright and doesn't have a huge window on yep. the top. So that means it's cut too shallow and then you, you just see it through the stone. The, there's no color for the stone because it's not well cut. Mm -hmm. So inclusions, cut, color. Color yep. is important to mm -hmm. when you buy it. And I think there's also what's specific to tourmaline is that it also grows in more wet environments. So I think you can also find little bubbles of liquid throughout as well, right? You can have some small crystals inside. You can have, it, we don't call them bubbles because mm -hmm. if you find bubbles, that means it's a fake stone or, a yeah, yeah, yeah. or glass. But you can have some little gas. Like pockets. Yeah, little, little pockets gas pockets though. in it. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have crystals. You can have a little, you, you can have a little fissures that are not dangerous for the stone too. That's okay. If they're small, they're not too big. Go for it if the color is beautiful. Mm -hmm. The tourmaline, I think the, the most important aspect is origin and color when you're looking for one. Because you can have a paraiba that's not going to be a perfectly well cut stone, but it's going to have the most perfect color or origin. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to buy it. Because if it's a paraiba, you're, go you're gonna sell it anyways. Yeah, a hundred percent. Also, like she mentioned uh, trillions before, I have seen so many beautifully cut trillion, cut tourmalines. And I just want to mention that you guys, I know we don't get asked very often, but these are stones that look very good in necklaces and things like that. So do be open to that because the cut of a trillion is really beautiful. And you don't see it that often in tourmaline because it's a, it's a rough that grows in length. So you're gonna see emerald cuts. Mm -hmm. So when you see other shapes, look at it closely because there's a reason why it was cut in that shape. And maybe it's because of the color, because they wanted it more saturated. Maybe it's because of the shape of the rough hat. Look at it more closely if it's not emerald cut or oval or a cushion. <laughs> What's interesting about tourmaline is that there's not a lot of treatments. Yep. So contrary to uh, ruby sapphires where there's a glass filled, heating, uh, all the, 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 all the treatments you can think of, tourmaline only has one. Mm -hmm. So normally tourmaline are only heated and yep. they're not all heated because it doesn't take thermic shock well. Okay. So and I'm assuming it'll also remove some of like the pleochroic properties, right? If it's heated, will it reduce some of the color plays? It no? will reduce it a bit, yeah. but not. you're not going to notice it. Okay. You're not going to notice yeah. it. And uh, you don't heat the pink ones because the pink ones are the first that, that are going to break if you heat them. Mm. You only heat the ones that you know are going to do a better color with it. So mainly Paraiba. Mainly Paraiba. Mainly Paraiba. Okay. The other ones, they're not known to be heated that much. Okay. Uh, it doesn't, you don't do anything with that. So and it's cool that it's coming out this, like naturally, this is naturally occurring, the color. Of course. Which I love. No treatments, pretty much. So now in terms of synthetics and imitations, there are definitely some. No synthetics. No synthetics. No synthetics. Okay. You have imitations, that's mm -hmm. for sure. You have other stones that will try to imitate. So you have glass, you're going to have synthetic spinels, you're going to have synthetic sapphires. They're all going to try and imitate sometimes the tourmaline, depending on the color that they have. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have uh, also plastic, glass, all the usual ones are going to imitate it. Mm -hmm. But there are no known synthetic tourmalines because Kay. the chemical composition is longer than my arm. <laughs> So Kay. scientists looked at it. They said no. All right. <laughs> okay. So it's a fun stone. There's no synthetic tourmaline. You're going to have, like I said, you're going to have imitations because I didn't see the comments looking. No, I found an imitation. You have imitations, no synthetics. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've seen pictures of imitations as well of like glass, two pieces of glass with like a sheet glued in between. <laughs> and you can just tell, <laughs> you just tell the color change is like not natural. Listen, um, the worst I saw was on eBay, I think. It was someone trying to imitate a watermelon tourmaline, and then they used Sharpie. Ooh. Sharpie, you know, yeah, they colored a little pink in it in the class, and wow. then sold it as watermelon. Ooh. <laughs> and, desperate uh, times. <laughs> desperate times call for desperate measures. And you also have uh, a lot of glass. So the glass, it's easy to play with the colors, mm. and you can mix them together. So the most dangerous stone, I'd say, would be synthetic spinel and glass. Okay. To look out for for the tourmaline. Okay. Perfect. And 
And then lastly, I guess we'll just touch on like the origins because I think pretty much comes from around the world. Brazil, Sri Lanka, Tanzania, everywhere. Kenya. It's, yeah. You even have tourmaline in Canada. Really? Uh-huh. You have tourmaline in Maine, in the United States. You have tourmaline a bit everywhere. Mm-hmm. But in Canada, it's not. It's a private property, so you can't really go mine that. But you can find some pink ones. You can find some green ones. You can find some black ones. You have tourmaline in Canada. Not commercial, not yeah. commercialized, really. But uh, you can find it a, a bit everywhere. Some of the best tourmalines, and we'll go with watermelon, the blue ones, the red ones, all the ones that you want. They're either from Brazil or they're going to be from Congo. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if you want to look, these two are one of the best. If you don't look at uh, the other ones, uh, of course, Paraiba, but it's the same. It's Brazil. So mm-hmm. Brazil, Congo, I'd say are the two best localities, but you have a lot of choice and less expensive options from Afghanistan too. And the other ones, I mean, you're going to find beautiful stones in every mm-hmm. country. Mm-hmm. But they're the most notable ones. Notable, yeah. Okay. Well, Lian, this has been a pleasure. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, do leave them down below. We'll try to answer them whenever we can. If you want any custom orders, you can always send me a DM. And of course, check out our TikTok, Dominic Flux, because we do have short form content. So like all of this juicy, good stuff, we're going to basically put them down to like two minute videos. So if you don't got time, because we're all busy these days, hop on over and uh, check it out. Thank you, Larian. Thank you. Bye.